Okay, this is going to be the, I guess, 2010 edition of uh, Action Script 3 Basics. I did record this uh, tutorial, tutorial very similar to this one a few years back uh, in the days of CS3. Of course, we're using uh, CS5 now. And this isn't really a revised version because all that code that was taught before is uh, just as valid as it uh, was back then as it is today. But um, we can certainly update things. And uh, I guess probably the big update is uh, the look of the program itself. Uh, let me go ahead and open up um, CS5. CS5 looks pr pretty much identical to how it looked in um, CS4. But there was uh, kind of a you know an X-Men style leap forward uh, between CS3 and um, CS5. And I'm just uh, actually viewing the, the previous tutorial right now. Uh, and this was, uh, again, CS3. So you can see that the properties uh, back then were uh, in this floating window down here at the bottom. And this was kind of more of a horizontal window. And uh, filters were kind of tabbed into that uh, along with parameters. Uh, nowadays, uh, your properties are a column. And those filters are not a separate window. Uh, when you do end up selecting um, objects, they, they end up showing up over here. And um, you know to screen capture this, I've got to kind of minimize um, the amount of workspace I have. My monitor is much bigger than this. And this is actually one of the things that, that kind of frustrates me a little bit about this layout is that um, at times I'd almost like to have that horizontal view back because I tend to have to scroll down a lot if I have a lot of these things kind of uh, folded open. But um, overall, it's a good um, user interface change. Uh, one thing, too, that uh, if you are kind of playing with uh, your program right out of the box, which is possible if you're using it or if you're viewing a basic course like this, you might um, be seeing all these tools over here on the far right. Uh, that's one of the weirdest things that they did. Uh, and of course, at any time, you can just grab this panel and just move it over here to the side. Um, I'm also using this classic wor workspace over here. And I can't remember which one of these um, they have uh, set by default, but um, classic uh, reminded me of the the classic uh, Flash uh, user or workspace layout. And I think for most uh, developers that have been using the program for a, a few years, they probably found that workspace and decided they like that one best. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, uh, user interface wise that we should talk about. Oh, well, if you do have a kind of single stack over here, you can at, at any time just kind of compress this together. Um, I like the do double stack here. And again, this kind of has to do with the fact that I don't like uh, tools kind of running off uh, outside of uh, a minimal workspace. And let's do this too. Let's go over here to our user preferences. Um, one thing I like to have uh, clicked on is this, um, well, shift select and uh, let's see. And I like to unselect contact sensitive um, selection and lasso tools. And I will show you why that is really quick. This kind of doesn't really have to do any with anything with coding, but um, let me just demonstrate. I just made a square out here really fast and I'm gonna convert it to a symbol. You can always hit F8 to do that. I'll just call it symbol one, click OK. And when I'm selecting things, I like having to select the entire object to get a hold of it uh, versus um, if that was checked on what I just showed you, you could just kind of you know click down like this and select. And if any part of, of what you just dropped released right here um, was over top of an object, it would select that entire object. And again, that kind of has more to do with um, illustration as a preference, but um, you know, if you, I kind of like to have everybody on the same page too. So if you see me doing something and um, you have trouble doing it, you know, repeating those steps, that yeah, could be why. Um, go back over here to preferences though, and let's see, there we go. Go over here to action script. And um, if it is easier for you to have the same color coding as me, go ahead and um, set that up right now. And of course, if you need a little extra time to set those color settings, go ahead and just pause this video. Otherwise, uh, let's go over here and actually uh, begin to write some action script. So let's grab something from the library that isn't as uh, boring as just a simple square. Although, um, if you do remember, just a second ago, I did uh, draw a square and uh, call it symbol one. And uh, one thing that you should know is that uh, in your library, that's where that uh, movie clip that uh, we created uh, went. Okay, so this is a basically a piece of reusable artwork now. Uh, at any time, I can just take it back out of the library, drop it onto the stage. And if I had two of them out here, uh, let's suppose I changed one of them. So I've just double clicked inside of it. 
Um, I'm just going to select half of it, right? Hit delete on the keyboard, and it's going to delete that um, in both of those um, copies of it. All right, it's just kind of uh, how Flash works. Okay, uh, if you did want to though uh, create a duplicate copy of it, what you would do is go over here with uh, one of them selected, and then go over here to Symbol Duplicate Symbol. Okay, so that's much different than just a copy and a paste. Copy and a paste is going to just copy that same instance or copy of it and they're all going to be tied back to that original source symbol there okay so you have to go over there to the symbol duplicate symbol and that's going to make a unique uh, version of it so anyway um, I have stuffed inside of the uh, library of this uh, example file uh, a symbol called moon and uh, it's not the uh, prettiest thing in the world but it's a little bit cooler looking than uh, that uh, that square I had out there. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just play around with uh, changing some of the properties uh, of this uh, symbol uh, with ActionScript. And uh, it's, you know, it's basically the same stuff that we could do um, using, if you were to press down on the Q key, or just go over here to uh, your free transform tool. Uh, it's all stuff that uh, we, we could do through here too. I mean, like rotating it, uh, scaling it up and down, uh, moving it around. But uh, of course the point of this tutorial is to teach code. So let's uh, do it that way. And I'm gonna head back over here to properties now. Uh, and by the way, if uh, if your library, of course, wasn't uh, open before, um, you can always find all these windows somewhere inside of here. See, there's a library. Okay, so uh, one of the big key things that we have to do right now is uh, give uh, this movie clip symbol an instance name. And you can see that when you have it selected over here, uh, you've got this box that says instance name. It's just screaming for us to call this guy Moon. And... Let's go ahead and move this moon all the way over here to the kind of the top left. And uh, just as an example, let me go and publish this out really fast. So I'm going to over here to control, uh, test movie. And when I do that, how come it didn't do anything for me? There we go. Yet another one of the things that they changed just slightly in this version. Uh, and, okay, so we're seeing basically how this... Um, uh, this this uh, FLA file looks when it gets published out as a .swf, and of course not a lot of it is happening. We're just seeing our moon again on the stage, and uh, the, the only reason I'm doing this is just to prove the point that uh, when we do write some code in here, we're going to take this moon and move it out uh, to the center of the stage. And uh, one thing you should get used to is seeing me kind of uh, hotkey publishing, and um, to do that, you want to go over here and find the hotkey for uh, test movie and, and in my case on the Mac it's the uh, command key and just um, hitting the return button so on the PC I believe it is uh, well, I forgot my PC keyboard it's um, probably the key that's right next to the space bar and then return okay so here we go we're gonna actually write code I'm gonna go over here and click on new layer I'm just gonna uh, double click on this and call it action script uh, you don't have to do that but uh, it's just a Nice little thing to do for you guys. Be sure that uh, empty keyframe is selected. And I can hit F9 or I can go over here to uh, Actions. And, whoa, it's going to take over the screen. We don't need to see that much stuff. Let me kind of slide this off to the side. Well, I didn't mean to actually uh, make this part of the, uh, the, uh, the interface, but that's okay. We, we can leave it tabbed in there for a little bit. So we're just going to write moon and then dot x. Uh, as soon as you type dot x, that should uh, turn green. And let's make this equal 350. And then the big thing that we have to do that after that is hit the semicolon. Okay, so that's not just a regular colon, it's a semicolon. And then I'm just going to come down one more line and run right moon dot y equals uh, let's go 350 again and let's publish it out again I'm going to hotkey publishing it out so I don't have to go the slow way every time and obviously you can see that our, now our moon uh, has moved around like that uh, another thing you could do if uh, you're kind of new to programming is just write st instead of 350 again you could write uh, or paste in there moon dot x and you're going to get uh, the same result you could also uh, if you want to be even fancier, write moon.x um, plus 100. So we're just adding on to that property. And well, that's kind of a not, uh, it's not enough of an adjustment to be obvious. Let's, uh, let's subtract it by 300. Okay, so makes sense. You can also use uh, multiplication and division in there as well. Uh, if you've never done that uh, with the programming, the uh, the star key is going to multiply it right there, so that's, uh, of course, the uh, key that... Uh,